Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. The following session is a discussion regarding clip ligation of posterior communicating artery aneurysms. Dr. Greg Thompson from University of Michigan will be our guest speaker. Thank you. Well, thank you, Aaron, for uh, inviting me to participate. Uh, and let me say that uh, you've done a great job organizing this. Thank you, uh, Greg. I appreciate your time today. Let's go ahead and briefly review our disclosures, none of which interferes with the presentation today. I thought to make this uh, talk exciting to start with a video of yours, which you would like to share with us. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the video and uh, let us see the details you would like to talk to us about the posterior communicating artery aneurysms. Yes, this was a uh, patient who presented with a uh, Hunt-Hess grade two subarachnoid hemorrhage and um, was found on uh, angiography to have a proximal posterior communicating artery aneurysm. He had some hydrocephalus, so as you see on this video, uh, we placed a ventriculostomy at the time of surgery via the point of Samson and Bacher, uh, which I always like quite a bit because it gives you relaxation when you need it. And here we're just opening up the uh, optic carotid cistern. And the thing that I think is uh, notable about this case and a good starting point is that you will see as the section goes that the proximal neck of the aneurysm is actually under the clinoid and not accessible via the usual approach. And so here we are opening up over the uh, internal carotid, just medial to the carotid and lateral to the optic nerve. And then looking a little bit more distally now. And I opened the fissure just to relax, uh, give a little bit of relaxation between the optic and uh, carotid as well as the frontal and temporal lobe. And I try and get a medial view to see the, uh, the uh, perforators off the PCOM looking between the optic nerve and the, and the internal carotid. You see you have a very good view of the perforators right there. And if you, if um, I'll get this arrow, can you see my arrow? Yes, yes, I can. So here is the posterior communicating artery. The third nerve, which uh, you can't see very well yet, is out here. And the neck is here. Here's the distal neck of the aneurysm. The proximal neck is going to be up under the uh, anterior clinoid process. And I always uh, would like to achieve proximal control. So uh, in this case, we're going to drill the clinoid. And I'm starting out by making an H-shaped incision uh, over the uh, lateral aspect of the anterior clinoid and then medial over the optic canal and falciform ligament right here. And uh, I've palpated previously to make sure that I'm that the, uh, the there's bone here over the optic canal, so you don't want to make that cut until you've felt that. And then using a small mm -hmm. caudal, I just flap the uh, dura down, and then I uh, use a uh, first a cutting and then a diamond tip uh, drill to drill the anterior clinoid away. And this ends up making a remarkable uh, improvement in the proximal exposure of the internal carotid, as you'll see momentarily, and allowing me to, to see proximal on the uh, internal carotid, proximal to the aneurysm, in case we should need it for, for uh, aneurysm rupture. I always, the first thing that I try to do always is to uh, see the internal carotid proximal to the aneurysm, have a place that I can get a temporary clip on if I should need it. And here, actually, the clinoid's been drilled away. And I, on lateral pointing PCOMs as opposed to posterior pointing, I like to use uh, a bayoneted clip because I can look through the uh, blades of the clip as I'm putting it on the neck. And then the, the dome is still uh, adherent to the third nerve. I'm going to leave that for now. And then look medially to see both the PCOM and the perforators, there's the PCOM and the perforators off of the P. 